uh, where would you like to start when it comes to diving into what I'm imagining is an enormous topic yeah. of of shadows that are associated with each of these generations? Which generation? Are we going to just isolate some generations and talk about them specifically? Well, I want to reference something real quick that I think is important that we don't maybe need to break down fully yet. Maybe it's something that we will in a future episode, but I feel like there's the there are these dualities that are coming forth mm-hmm. that I'm also noticing following this principle of persona and shadow again persona what we decide to bring forward that we deem as good shadow what we repress that we deem as bad and there are other dualities that i notice i mean the book uh, fourth turning and generations notes that there are some patterns that emerge from various generations there's individuals and collective you know the boomer and gen x generation tend to be more individual for various reasons and the uh, the millennial and Gen Z tend to be more collective, right? We've got masculine and feminine dichotomies. We've got give and receive dichotomies. We've got inner world and outer work, outer world work. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, what I'm calling narcissism and victimhood, but it could be a sense of entitlement or victim mentality. And these are some reference points that we might pull up in this conversation or something we'll talk about in the future. But I think these are important to think about when we're dealing with these sort of inverses as it, as it were. So I think we can just jump right into the first generation that I think is important to talk about, which is the baby boomers slash profit generation. They were, Joel, do you remember the, the dates for the boomer generation? <laughs> uh, I'm going to hopefully get these right. I believe it's somewhere around 1943 to 45, somewhere in that range. So we're taking Strauss and Howe's generational yeah. model. Mm-hmm. And that's where these dates come from. So I know the media has a lot of their own dates on these. Like right. there's a bunch of different date ranges. It's variable, right? But we're using it from the book, Fourth Turning. And uh, I believe it's 1943 to 1961 is, I believe, what the... I don't have a chart for 61 to 64, yeah. somewhere in that range, I think. And it's usually... Uh, but but I mean, thinking in the range is probably fine because we don't really need to uh, be... Yeah. Be precise. But roughly around there. Roughly around that time. So Early uh, to mid-1940s to early 1960s. And what stuck out to me from the baby boomer generation is they've been they've been referred to often as the me generation. I mm-hmm. think Ken Wilber has a book called Boomeritis, and they're talking yeah. about the, the baby boomer uh, desire to focus on oneself. But the perception or what people see, often with our shadows, it's like other people see what we can't see. That's another reference that I use with shadow is the me that I can't see. Other people notice it. If I repress it, people can still see it. I think it's gone, but other people notice it. And I think with baby boomers, I, many of us have this perception that they were social, uh, social activists and they did all this great work in the sixties and put a lot of energy towards the external world, solving civil rights and all yep. those kinds of feelings. Um, but at its core, there were studies being done that point out that the boomer generation around the time of Vietnam, and there was a lot of resistance. There was a lot of uh, activism and, and fighting against the war studies being done that actually tried to denote where the worldview or the values of the people fighting against the war were. And Primarily, <clears throat> the boomer generation were me focused. They just wanted to not be drafted. Many yeah. of them did not want to be drafted. There were people who were genuinely fighting for human rights and no war, and we don't want to see the world divided and dealing with all of that stuff. Yeah. But primarily, there was a lot of me focus for that generation. And that <clears throat> resonates with me, by the way, because as a Gen Xer, raised by the boomer generation, we were pretty much left our own devices. Mom and dad, archetypically, now my parents were a little bit more involved in my life, but archetypically, mom and dad were out doing their own thing. They were focused on themselves. Mm -hmm. We saw in the 1970s, you could talk to any child of the 70s, divorce rates are spiking because again, mom and dad want to go off individually and do what makes sense to them. They don't, they're not just going to follow the traditions that were handed to them because just because they're going to pursue the things that matter. And, and then we see, I think in the 1980s, a buy-in into like the Reaganomics energy of like, I'm going to have my career, you know, I didn't sell out, I bought in kind of mentality from the boomers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm going to, I'll, I'll take on debt, whatever it takes. I'm going to make money. It's about consumerism. It's about material wealth. It's about getting me in mind and making sure I've got my nest egg built up. And I think that was really the ethos, but it was birthed around this kind of like idealistic, what you're talking about, this idealistically, like we're going to change the world. We're going to push back on the war. 
you know, we're going to be very commune, community focused. But is that really true? Is that really baked into the ethos of that generation? And I, and I think the archetype of the prophet generation really guided this generation in terms yes. of speaking their will into existence. I don't want to go to war. Yeah. So people gathered around and tried to make that happen. Like they literally have megaphones, like mm-hmm. film footage of them, like with megaphones protesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think of that as the, like the boomer right. image in my mind. Right. So referencing pe- previous episodes, you, you know, we covered a lot of this idea of, of the prophet speaking what they want forward. And so to me, that brings out what I would say is an inner sense, sense of authority. Their persona is a sense of authority, or you could even say authoritarian, but I'm not going to go, I'm not trying to say extreme in terms of the type of government that, you know, boomers would create, but it's almost like just a cultural reference point of very authority focused. I know what I want. I know what I stand for. I know what I need. I know what I care for. I'm going to speak it forward and I'm going to make sure that people galvanize around me to make it happen. So there's a lot of authority that goes forward and that's carried throughout their entire lives. So that persona is something that they've perpetuated throughout their lives. It's affected every generation following. I think Joel, you referenced to me when we were talking offline about how the next generation, Gen X, like picked up a lot of pieces or made things happen where boomers were desiring to make things happen, but they're so used to speaking things forward. They were not learning the skills to make it happen. Yeah. And then Gen X shows up and you learn how to make things happen. Yeah. Right. So, so what are we saying as the generational shadow for boomers then? Like be more specific. Cause I'm, I want to make sure I'm landing this yeah. clearly what you're saying. So we've got this authority forefront, right? Okay. This authority persona, I know what I want. I'm projecting what I want. I'm creating the circumstances of what I want with my voice. The other side of it is a socialism shadow. Now you mentioned they're, you know, going straight and narrow. They're getting what they want. They're making sure their ducks in a row. They're getting paid. They're getting the jobs. They're doing all of the things. Now there is an aspect of baby boomers growing up in a post-war time period where there was a lot of social rules and the social rules if they engaged in them, they saw them as dangerous, meaning that their parents were more engaged in the social rules and they just had to follow them. Yeah. The, they were not defining social rules. They were just engaging them and perpet and really just assigning themselves to the system. Now we've got these narratives again of, of baby boomers going through their lives and speaking into existence what they want. And it seems like people get this impression that they're, they're more, doing social good again they're focusing on themselves but there is this greater sense that baby boomers don't realize or we get this i think people look at baby boomers and they realize that you're very dependent on the system Mm -hmm. even though they they push that down they do not express that they are dependent on the system typically they express what they want i want to make this happen but in order to make that happen it happens because of how embedded into the social systems that they are. So even today in today's politics, they're championing the previous system. You referred to it as more of a TE or effectiveness system that is changing now into more of a harmony FE kind of system, which I agree with. And it's really hard for them to make that transition right now. They're grasping onto that because it's, it's what allows them to feel like they have a voice and that voice is something that they can use. And so if that, that ability to use that voice is fading, they are going to shrink and shrink and focus on their own peer group and social system more and more and more. And it's isolating them from their kids, from their grandkids. And uh, it's kind of sad to see they're not really stepping, uh, at least a lot of what I've experienced, they're not stepping into elderhood in a um, nurturing, supportive uh, way that is self-sacrificing. Mm-hmm. And really that's what I mean by socialism is like the sa- self-sacrificing. Let's distribute our wealth to people that need it. Let's help people that are, you know, in need. Otherwise it's, it's just, it's just me, the me generation. And the converse that is everybody. The converse mm-hmm. to that is everybody. 